Now, when adding vectors, it's simply adding the components together to work out the final result. But what if we need to multiply vectors together? There are two ways to multiply vectors. The first is referred to as the dot product, and the second is the cross product. In this video, we're gonna focus our attention to the dot product. Now the dot product is important in physics because what it allows us to do is to work out how much of the first vector contributes to the second vector in the same direction. So for example, we might look at the concept of work. Now in high school, we look at two dimensional situations and we say, well, how much of the force is contributing to the displacement? And so what we do is work out the component that is in the direction of that displacement and we get work force times displacement times the cosine of the angle. Now things get a little bit more tricky, particularly if the vectors are in three dimensional space. And this is where the dot product becomes really helpful. Now the dot product of two vectors of A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by the cosine of the angle that exists between the two vectors. Now, because of the fact that A and B are just implicitly magnitudes in the end, that this answer ends up always being a scalar quantity. That also means that it doesn't matter which you multiply first. So I could do A dot B, I could do B dot A, I end up getting exactly the same result. Let's write this in algebraic form and then use an example. So let's say I have vector A, and we write it like this, is going to be a x i hat plus a y j hat plus a z k hat. Similarly speaking, my vector b is going to be b x component i hat plus b y j hat plus b z k hat. Now I would multiply each term with each other term simply basically distributing it out. And so what I end up getting is this. Now that seems a lot of terms, but remember the magnitude of A multiplied by magnitude of B times the cos of the angle between them. In this case, they're in the same direction. Our angle is zero, cosine zero is one, so that term stays. But for every single term here where we have two different letters, the angle is 90 degrees, which means the cosine of 90 is zero, so they effectively disappear. And so therefore, A dot B ends up equaling AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ B Z. So what about the angle now between A and B? Well, we know that A dot B is equal to the absolute value of A multiplied the absolute value of B multiplied the cosine of the angle. Now we've already established that's equal to this. So let's rearrange this. We end up getting cosine theta is equal to all of this, AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ all over the magnitude of A and B. And so that's how you can work out the angles. So now let's put that into practice. Let's say I have vector A, which is equal to, and then I have vector B. So how would I do this? Well, first of all, let's work out the dot product. So we know that A dot B is equal to the absolute value of A multiplied by the absolute value of B multiplied by the cosine of theta. But it's also, of course, equal to AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ. And so that is going to be equal to three and two plus one multiplied by negative two plus one multiplied by positive two. That's going to be equal to six. But what about the angle? We know that the cosine of the angle is equal to a dot B divided by the absolute values of A and B. So that means it's that six that we just calculated out. Now the actual magnitude of A equals the square root of three squared plus one squared plus one squared multiplied by the square root of two squared plus negative two squared plus 
2 squared. So that ends up being 6 over the square root of 11 times the square root of 12, which ends up being root 33 over 11. And that means our angle equals 58.5 degrees. Next, we're going to be exploring the cross product. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.